Hey guys, Alex Hollings from the Loadout Room here once again with another edition of How to Survive Anything, brought to you by our friends at the Crate Club. Now, if you're not familiar with the Crate Club, it is an awesome way to get tactical gear delivered right to your door, either by using their airdrop store to pick and choose what gear you want, or by subscribing to their Crate service, which will send you gear that was hand-picked right to your door every month. Of course, they also have cool shirts like this. If you like this shirt and some of the other ones you've seen me wearing on this channel, you can find them at CrateClub.us. Make sure you swing there after this video. Today, we're talking about something very important. The life-saving steps. The four life-saving steps. As taught by the United States Marine Corps, that's where I learned it, and by a number of other organizations throughout the country. Now, the four life-saving steps are not in any way an extensive list of ways to save a life. What it really is all about is stabilizing a victim long enough for you to get more help. Let's run through all four life-saving steps quick, and then we'll run through them one more time with a little bit more detail. One, start the breathing. Two, stop the bleeding. Three, protect the wound. And four, treat for shock. Now, those steps are not going to save everybody all the time but what they are going to do is give you a quick and easy set of instructions to triage a victim, get them as stable as you can get them, and then hopefully wait for help to arrive. So let's run through them one more time. Step one is start the breathing. That means make sure you clear their airway. If there's anything obstructing it, they may have food in their mouth. There might be something in their throat. You may need to do the Heimlich maneuver. You may even need to do CPR to start the breathing, but it is step one for a reason. You can only survive for around three minutes without air. So you'll die much faster with an obstructed airway than you will from bleeding out from most wounds. So step one has got to be start the breathing. Step two, stop the bleeding. Now, for a lot of wounds, arterial bleeding especially, bleeding out is a real risk. And that's why once the person's breathing, the next thing you got to do is keep their insides from leaking out. Best thing for that, in my opinion, is a tourniquet. There are a lot of great ones on the market. I prefer SWAT T, there, but there are plenty to choose from. In a, in a bind, you can actually use a lot of things for a tourniquet, like a belt. But uh, the, more, the more crazy you get with your tourniquet, the higher the likelihood is that the person may end up losing the limb, especially if you use a very thin one, for instance. So if you can, always use a good certified tourniquet. If you don't have access to one, you might need to get creative. Step three, protect the wound. That means... Get the debris out of that wound and clean it and dress it. Wrap it up with a bandage. Number one, that's going to stop you from making the wound worse. Number two, it will help stave off some forms of infection. And number three, it'll go a long way in helping to keep the bleeding from starting again. Compression bandages, things like that, can go a long way in saving someone's life, even after using a tourniquet. And step four, treat for shock. Treating for shock is a real easy thing to do. And for those of you out there who've been in shock, Unfortunately, I have been in shock a couple of times. Uh, it's really important that you get some help. You can, however, treat yourself for shock to some extent. The easiest way to treat someone for shock is to lay them flat on the ground, injury per permitting, elevate their feet to about 12 inches or a foot above their head, and cover them in a blanket and just talk to them. Help them chill out, help them relax, help them focus on something other than the injury itself. Now, one more time, start the breathing, Stop the bleeding, protect the wound, treat for shock. We will dive deeper into all four of those steps in later videos, but for now, that's all you need to know, and I'll get back to you with more survival tips every day right here on the Loadout Room. Make sure you like and subscribe down below. Swing by loadoutroom.com every day for new gear, adventures, and tips for me and the rest of the crew. And if you got the time, swing by crateclub.us. It is an awesome website to get tactical gear sent to you. Again, you can pick stuff from the airdrop store. You can have them pick stuff for you and send them right to your door. It's like Loot Crate, Loot Crate but for James Bond. And they got cool shirts. CrateClub.us, every day for your tactical needs. LoadoutRoom.com, every day for your adventure needs. Until next time, I'll see you later.